What's going on everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We have Basil Chapman on today. We have Tim Ord. A lot of stuff going on in the market, some stuff to look forward to, some stuff to keep in mind. I'm um, looking at Duke Energy right now. No big comments on it. I was just curious to see what was happening. Obviously, uh, you have some slight volatility in natural gas, um, probably not enough for them to go ahead and push through another uh, rate hike like they did uh, a few months ago, uh, considering I, I pull this back in the five year, right? It's so basically Duke Energy has a pretty solid, um, you know, kind of, they're not necessarily a monopoly, but um, they're pretty dominant, at least in my area, obviously in some other counties around the country. Uh, you have this kind of moment. Sorry, this is the Duke Energy here. You pulled the natural gas contract. Something that really struck me as crazy is they sent me a letter a few months ago saying due to the volatility in natural gas, um, they have to increase their, their rates, right? I mean, the volatility they were talking about occurred at this time, right? So you had it for a you know, few months here, then right back down, uh, back to kind of lower historic levels. Obviously, we're at 290 right now. You, know, you have a low of 144 off that. Um, but I always keep track of how natural gas moves, especially if it's volatile, to see what Duke Energy does. We were taking a look at Duke Energy in August um, of this, excuse me, in April of this year, and it's done kind of well since then, right? So to take a look at April. I mean, if I'm being fair to myself <laughs> or, or giving myself a little too much credit on it, you know, looking at that lower $92 area, we moved up quite a bit to 116. I'd definitely say if you live in this area, um, you know how expensive energy bills uh, can be. I live like a caveman in the sense that I never really have lights on. I have small lamps and I still pay an inordinate amount of money every month. So get in, get yourself some Duke Energy and kind of offset those costs a little bit. Uh, some stuff going on in the world today that can kind of impact us. Obviously, you have uh, the strikes going on at the ports. So that's something to keep in mind. If this goes on for a long period of time, we could obviously see uh, maybe inflation kick up uh, for the months uh, that that covered. Um, of course, you had the Israeli incursion into small areas of Lebanon in order to attack Hezbollah. Iran uh, met back with a few hundred rockets since some of them were caught by the Iron Dome, but a few of them hit as well. And then apparently there's going to be uh, heavy, um, I guess, air maneuvers from Israel uh, later in the evening. Now, this is all stuff to keep in mind, obviously, when you get really shaky international tensions. I think a lot of people actually didn't price this in in a strange way, right? I think that's why you're seeing crude oil up about 3% right now uh, when it's been down uh, for the past few days. Obviously, we were in the low 68s yesterday. I think a lot of people had priced out any kind of in increase in action. Um, certainly, the new president of Iran is a lot more moderate uh, than the guy prior who uh, passed away uh, a few months ago. But I, but I think this ramps up the tension, kind of, especially in the mind of people uh, outside of the area. So you get natural gas, excuse me, you get crude oil coming up about 3%, trading at 70, 16. You have gold moving a little bit, some of the other metals as well, uh, along with silver up about 0.67%. Uh, depending on what happens this evening and if there's any further retaliation from Lebanon um, or a particular Iran, uh, you can definitely see some pretty intense volatility, I would say, in crude oil and maybe some upward movement. Uh, in gold and silver as well. You have the composite off about 1.18%. Dow Jones Industrial about sideways off about 0.16%. The dollar is up a little bit, trading in the higher range uh, that it has been over the past few weeks, trading at 101.18 um, currently. It's some stuff with Powell coming out saying, okay, well, listen, you had some numbers that the job openings were okay, um, up at 8 million from 7.7 .7 million the month prior. This is from August. Uh, and then back in July as well. And then you have Powell essentially saying, like, we're gonna decrease rates, but it's gonna be steady. And you know, we'll see as, uh, as some of the more um, pertinent numbers kind of come out. So the dollar kind of comes up a little bit on this, obviously with conflict as well. You can kind of see that uh, too. Let's see here, you have the Dow futures off about 0.19. Let's see if anything else is interesting. We got the SPY trading uh, at 570.03 off about 0.65 and then still dynamics. I was going to take a look. Yeah, wow, look at that stuff right there. This is kind of what I was hoping for in this stock as well. I think we probably will establish a new range to see if we can pull back from this 130 level. This is a pretty big area of support here, or resistance rather. Uh, so I could see probably some bouncing off that 130 level in between 120 and 130, but that's pretty good volume uh, to the upside as well. And of course, some of the easing rates uh, are positive uh, for steel. Uh, we have Nike about to be reporting... 
after the bell here. And this stock has had some issues. Switched over leadership. I mean, obviously you can see here, right? So big gap down, we spoke about this when it happened. You have a movement back up, trying to test this level. We'll see if it happens, but a no volume kind of coming back down. The analysts are not expecting good results. And I, I don't think anyone uh, wasn't clear about that. Uh, but this is going to be how, how bad are they, right? So let's take a look a little bit. Um, analysts are expecting from the world's largest sneaker company for its fiscal first quarter 2025, according to the consensus estimates from LSEG. The earnings per share are 52 cents. The revenue they're looking for is 11.65 billion. Analysts are expecting sales to drop 10% from the year ago period and profits to plunge by nearly 45%. Over the last year, it's been accused of falling behind on innovation, ceding share to competitors as it focused on selling directly to consumers through its own website and stores rather than wholesalers such as Foot Locker and DSW. I kind of understand what they were trying to do with that, getting on this more kind of hype beast train in a way, right? Like we're going to do these rare drops. You can only get them on Nike um, or some of these weird other kind of retailers that are not the big ones like Foot Locker. Uh, but obviously they had some issues. You know, China comprises, but think about 15% of their revenue. And China has having issues. We spoke about the changing tastes of some of the consumers in China, especially the younger ones. Um, and then additionally, you're just having economic issues in China. And the government is trying to uh, stimulate that economy. Uh, under Donahoe's leadership, obviously Donahoe was stepping down. He's replaced by Elliot Hill. Uh, that's going to happen October 14th. Under Donahoe's leadership, the company grew annual sales more than 31%, but it got there by churning out legacy franchises such as Air Force One, Dunks, and Air Jordans. Obviously, that's not great. You, as this article is saying as well, right, they're not necessarily innovating in any capacity. I think it's hard, too, with, with Nike, right? It's not as easy as I think it used to be, where you found some kind of athlete that you liked, and you stuck them in the shoe, and it drove sales. Obviously, that worked with uh, Under Armour, um, with uh, Steph Curry. But, but I think, you know, for instance, you dump a lot of money into um, advertisement during the Olympics and having these Olympians wear the stuff. It didn't really drive anything. I think a lot of the sneakerheads, quote unquote, today like some of the, um, you know, unique options. I know um, Wilson, the tennis company, released some shoes and they're doing well, uh, too. So we'll see how Nike kind of fares today. Uh, folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Basil Chapman.